Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, you are most welcome and I'm looking forward to spend some time with you. Um, Kaori Kids is committed to provide the information and strategies to help as many children as possible. Make sure that your speakers or headphones are connected to your computer and that your computer's volume is turned up. You do not need a microphone, everyone except me is muted. We'll email a link to the recording of this web clinic within the next week. You can make use of the question box to ask questions at any time during the web clinic. However, I shall not be able to view the questions before the end during question time. I'll keep you busy with my slides and voice for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'll try my best to stick to that time. Thereafter, I'll answer questions for about another 10 to 15 minutes. You can also contact me via email at marga at kaorikids with any questions or concerns that you might have. I'll answer these individually and your privacy will be valued. Use the menu on the right of your screen which looks like this. You can check your sound in the box as indicated. Post your questions in the box marked questions. Please do not use the tag chat box as I shall not be looking at the questions before the end. The slides are available for you to download at this time. The slides are numbered so you can relate your notes to the slides at a later time. We are a large crowd which is very exciting. I hope this web clinic will give you insight in sensory processing disorder to help you and the children in your life. Okay, I'm Marga Gray, a pediatric occupational therapist. I have been an OT with a keen interest in sensory integration and in sensory processing for many years. Actually, I'm talking in decades now and not anymore in years. I am also a mother of three adult children and four gorgeous grandchildren. My latest focus and interest is Kaori Kids, as I want to help as many children as possible. And online programs are at this point of time the easiest and effect, most effective way to reach many children. Kaori Kids is committed to provide information and strategies to help as many children as possible. We rely on many years' experience and on the latest research to ensure that the information we provide, our programs and our advice are the best and the most relevant to help your child and or the other children in your care or life. So this web clinic is one in a series of short web clinics on sensory mod modulation. The previous web clinic presented by Kaori Kids was all about sensory processing disorder or SPD. SPD is a condition in which the brain has trouble receiving and processing information from the senses. The modulation of the sensations is one of the pillars of sensory processing disorder. If you missed out on the previous web clinic, please contact us to receive a free recording. It will help you to comprehend the series on sensory mod modulation with ease. Sensory modulation disorder leaves many children with symptoms of anxiety, with concentration issues and with poor coping skills for social and school environments. Parents are often in despair as they find it difficult to understand their child and to cope with the child's behaviour. <clears throat> sensory modulation is a neurological function and is the organization of sensory information for ongoing use. Efficient sensory modulation is the ability to effectively regulate the degree to which one is influenced by various sensory inputs. Sensory modulation disorder is the inefficient organization of sensory information leaving the child without effective self-regulation skills. There are many different behaviours that we observe in children with a lack of self-regulation, which will be discussed in this series of web clinics. 
One of the behaviours that we observe in children with sensory modulation disorder is the need to move, to wiggle, to fidget, and to be just on the go. These children are often referred for occupational therapy or other interventions as they tend to disrupt the class, they have difficulties to focus on their work, and they often have problems to follow instructions. Thus, they are often in trouble in the classroom and at home. These behaviours are usually not the child's chosen behaviours. These children really want to do the correct thing. They want to please the adults in their lives, but their personal reactions to the sensory experiences in the environment prevent, prevent them from doing so. Today we are going to discuss a boy nicknamed Zigzaggy. A synonym for wiggling is zigzag, and I thought that is a, an excellent description of a movement seeker. One who is on the go and moving, often in a zigzag pattern to avoid any obstruction. Zigzaggy is always on the go, wiggling, moving, shaking, hopping, bumping, running, pushing, rolling and often disrupting a quiet environment such as the classroom. Okay, now you know more or less what a movement seeker looks like. We shall also learn why Zigzaggy is different from calmer and focused peers. Zigzaggy needs to move when others are happy to sit and listen. Why? However, he can be involved in some tasks, for example Lego, for long periods of time. So what are the best strategies to help Zigzaggy? Okay, sensory processing disorder or SPD, as you all know by now, stands um, for sensory processing disorder. We have discussed this condition in detail in the previous web clinic. If you did not listen to it, please send your interest to receive a recording as soon as possible. I'm going to recap on sensory processing disorder very quickly. We don't have a lot of time. The process by which sensory information is sent to the brain via the sensory pathways. The brain processes this and then the brain sends messages back to the body which is our reaction to this or our behavior. Um, it's just like the, the environment is cold, you, your body perceives the cold through your sense of touch, it sends messages to your brain the brain processes that, it sends messages to your body, your reaction or behavior is to close the window or to put a jumper on. Okay, let's see the next one. So the nostology of sensory processing disorder was compiled by Miller and others. And I have used this in the previous web clinic where we have discussed all three disorders under the umbrella of sensory processing disorder. This present series of web clinics are focused on the modulation disorders. And today we are focusing on Zigzaggy, and he is a movement seeker. So it's, there are seven different senses, one of them is movement. So he's the movement seeker, he's craving movement. <clears throat> Sensory modulation disorder has to do with self-regulation. To get back to Zigzaggy, he is a seeker. He loves movement, he loves rough play, and he finds it challenging to sit still. He loves Lego and plays for long periods of time with excellent concentration. However, his teacher reports that concentration in the classroom is poor. His mother knows that he is a good boy. He wants to behave but finds school challenging and cannot understand why he gets into trouble. His parents pick up anxiety with oppositional behavior at home, especially after school. So in the previous web clinic, we have covered the sensory thresholds. I'm just going to, cut, to do this very quickly because I don't want people to miss out on this. Zigzaggy has a high threshold for movement and he presents with movement seeking behaviors. His body needs to move in order to self-regulate. 
he needs to move to concentrate. At times, Zig Zaggy seems to be in his own world and doesn't respond when his name is called. He often misses instructions and is then at a loss and doesn't know what is expected of him. So we just see there the low thresholds and then that is exactly poor attention, daydream, movement seeking, often not responding to people calling his name or giving instructions. Um, so with that poor attention and limited awareness, he often run into others. He might bump his school bag into furniture without realizing the havoc that he is creating. So he has a high threshold for, for movement. This threshold can change from hour to hour and from day to day, which of course can be quite confusing if you um, want him to learn something. Okay, so let's look at the vestibular system. The vestibular system provides information about the movement of the body in space, specifically the movement of the head. The receptors for the vestibular processing are in the inner ear. Zigzaggy has trouble processing the sensations received from the receptors of the inner ear. The sensations from the inner ear are combined with the sensations from the eyes to help Zigzaggy with balance and the awareness of body in relation to the space around the body. His eyes tell him where he is in the room, his ears tell him what is going on in the room and the vestibular system recognizes if his body is moving or stationary and help him to maintain balance. There are also proprioceptive sensations going from his muscles and his joints and that tells your brain in which position your body is and which muscles are contracting and which muscles are relaxed. <clears throat> so to get back to the vestibular system as such, one of the assessments that we use to determine the effective functioning of the vestibular system is to compare balance with open and with closed eyes. When you close your eyes, you have to rely on your vestibular system to maintain your balance. That, and that system is, as I said, in the inner ear. And that is why if you would um, have inner ear infection, you sometimes lose your sense of balance. Um, so zigzaggy can balance on one leg for about 10 to 15 seconds, which, is, which isn't great, but it's okay. However, when asked to close his eyes, he can only maintain his balance for about two to three seconds. And that might be an indication of um, a vestibular system that is not developed optimally. Other indication, indications of poor vestibular functioning might be a tendency towards car sickness and prolonged feelings of dizziness after rotation. And I have also seen kids that can spin and spin for very long periods of time without any feelings of dizziness and that also indicates some problems. So this vestibular system affects balance and the ability to sit still in the upright posture but it also affects the level of arousal, movement and it has an effect on the development of language as well. This means that Zigzaggy does not have a behavioral problem, he has a processing problem. He cannot help that his body tells him to move. He needs the movement to self-regulate and to concentrate. Okay, many people, including therapists not trained in sensory integration therapy, use movement in an effort to improve the processing of the vestibular proprioceptive sensations and to optimize the functioning of the system. They encourage the child to roll, to crawl, to jump, to run, to spin and to swing. Zigzaggy is participating in many different movement opportunities at home and at school. However, his need to move is never satisfied. He can spin in a hammock for ages without feeling dizzy. This is the problem with a movement seeker. 
He needs to move, cannot sit still, but the movement is not part of an activity or of a game. It doesn't have a functional goal. So zigzaggy is often observed to run, to jump, to shake his body, to fidget. However, these movements are not functional and will not um, lead to improved vestibular functioning. You will also notice that he might avoid some movements um, and activities such as exercises that involve balancing or specific skilled movements. When encouraged to participate in these, Zigzaggy often behaves like a clown, makes fun of the activity and is in general disruptive. If at all possible, he would avoid these movements and revert to jumping, bouncing and moving without a specific goal. Okay, Zigzaggy tends to avoid slow movements, especially when he has to move to a specific beat. He finds it tricky to follow a specific sequence of movement, as when dancing and swimming can also be challenging. Zigzaggy enjoys the movement, but his sensory processing will not improve if the movements do not involve specific targeted movements as part of an activity with a goal, a motivation and positive feedback to the body. To be therapeutic, movement should involve the adaptive response, which I have explained in the previous web clinic. Without the adaptive response, the child will enjoy the movement, but development, progress and a reduced need to move will not be obtained. So let us help Zigzaggy. He really has a lot of problems in his life. So, regular movement breaks is one of the, the best ways to help him. So we need to provide movement opportunities, otherwise he might feel that he's not coping and always in trouble. We need calming strategies to help him to self-regulate. We can use environmental modifications and we can use therapy intervention. We want to help Zigzaggy to be the happy, confident and competent boy which we know he is inside. We want to help to reduce his frustration levels and to feel that he is a model student. Zigzaggy do not deserve to be marked as troublemaker in class or as the naughty boy in the street. The way we can help, apart from the therapy intervention, are these strategies that I've um, provided here and we will discuss each of them. Let's just do general um, things that we can do to help him um, in at home and at school. So we'll first discuss the um, movement opportunities. First of all, regular movement breaks are really important. We cannot expect Zigzaggy to sit still for, peri for long periods of time because he doesn't have the self-regulation, concentration and the ability. These movements are more powerful for improved concentration if it is slower and controlled. Running and jumping with no specific goal can increase the need to move and often do not lead the way to a calm and focused state of mind. Walking, I find, is quite regulating. The rhythmical movements with the pressure on the feet usually assists with self-regulation. And then head movements, because remember the, this um, center where the um, movement is registered, the vestibular system is in your inner ear, so your head needs to move to um, activate that system. Um, a movement corner in the class or in the home can be an excellent way to help zigzaggy. Examples of exercises such as stretches, touching toes, push-ups can be printed and put on the wall. And when Zigzaggy is overactive, he can go to this corner and do one of the exercises before returning to the task at hand. 
Initially, an adult needs to identify that he needs to do this. But eventually, Zigzaggy will learn to read the needs of his body and to do these exercises without prompting. And I have seen that many times, that a child will eventually, after um, a period of time to train him to read his body, say, I think my body is very busy at the moment. I think I'm not concentrating. I can do some of those exercises to help me to concentrate. Um, it is important never to send him to the corner for like as a punishment. It should always be part of a process to help him towards self-regulation. Now, the other thing with um, kids that are movement seekers, they cannot sit still and listen. So when the teacher is talking or mum is giving instructions or um, they have to listen to a, a TV program, they, have, they often have to move. Um, and it, we as adults often say, sit still and look at me and listen to what I'm saying. But if they can't, they might be much better off to move, bounce a ball, um, stretch, touch toes and stand up and touch toes and stand up while they're listening. And you will actually find that the listening and the um, comprehension of what you said is much better if they can move while listening. So most children will benefit from movement breaks. So it will be beneficial for any teacher to have some movement breaks in the classroom. Of course, the movement seeker will, will need movement breaks much more often than other kids. Um, also, the older children um, in the more senior classes, they have breaks um, like, you know, lunch break and morning tea break and they can go outside and they come back in and our perception is they had a break so they need to concentrate again. But what do they do during those breaks? In the senior um, classes, those kids don't play. They they talk to each other. They stand around and talk. They sit around and talk. Um, they, very, they Perhaps they walk to the toilet or whatever, but they don't really do any exercise. The younger kids go out and they play. They really play and they move a lot, but um, just check the older ones. They might come back in from a break without movement opportunities and then they still need that in the class to make sure that they can concentrate. So if you are a teacher and you want to incorporate some movement breaks in the class for active kids, remember that the whole class will benefit from that and you don't have to do it for 15 minutes. It's a few minutes at a time but at regular um, stages throughout the day. Now, I have de developed the Kaori class program, especially to assist teachers. It can be used at home and it can be used with teachers. It can be used with adults in offices as well. Um, so, let me just explain this a little bit. Kaori class is one of our programs and has been proven to be successful and effective with movement seekers and any other group of people alike. I have actually used it during a Friday evening presentation when the attendees were falling asleep after a busy week and a very long day. And voila, everybody stayed alert and awake for the rest of the presentation. And it took about three to five minutes to go through these exercises. So this program consists of online video recorded exercises to help with focus and attention in class or in a lecture. Um, it helps, it provides head movements, it provides brain bridging, so it helps the two sides of the body and the two hemispheres of the brain to communicate with each other. Um, it has some aspect of balance and rhythm in it and some aspect of listening. And you can have a look at that. Um, there are examples also on the Coordi Class um, website. All right, so get, let's get back to zig, ziggy, zigzaggy. Um, so with children that are really very active, um, we need to give them movement breaks because they need to move, but we also need to help them um, to calm down and to self-regulate. So after moving, it will be a good idea to do deep pressure and proprioception. Deep pressure is just heavy weight on the skin, 
and proprioception is impulses from your muscles and your joints, so that's when the muscles move the joints. A very good idea is to have weighted objects on the body or weighted ob objects that you can carry. Um, log rolling is a good example, pushing, pulling is a good example, hand pushes, just put your hands together in front of the chest and push them together. Um, push-ups on the floor or push-ups like this little boy on the chair is a good idea and then fidgeting toys to keep the hands busy and that is one of the reasons why Zigzaggy can play Lego for long periods of time. First of all, when they play Lego they usually sit on the floor and they, there's lots of movement opportunity because they stretch to kit pieces, they sit on side sit and then they sit cross-legged and you know then on their knees and then also with the Lego pieces, they have they get a lot of proprioception in their fingers and hands to press the pieces together and to break them apart. So let's have an example of zigzaggy. Um, and one of the questions we had was um, about a boy that find it really difficult to sit still at dinner time. Um, so before Zigzaggy has his dinner, his parents ask him to do log rolling on the carpet in the lounge. So just a few, just, you know, in both directions, perhaps five or six rolls and back again, fairly slow. And then he walks to the table doing a wheelbarrow walk with Dad, who is holding his feet. Then at the table, he puts a weighted lap pad on his legs. There you see that. And he uses the theraband around the legs of the chair so that he can push his legs against that and he can kick against it. Then he has to eat a portion of his meal, say about five or ten bites, before he can walk around the table. So while he's chewing and swallowing his food, he can do push-ups on his chair, put the hands on the chair and push up. And also you can put some Play-Doh, Therapati, Lego on the table and he can play with that while he's chewing and swallowing. And then you can, um, when his parents observe that he is finding it difficult to finish the portion of food that they told him to finish, then they can send him on an errand. So, for instance, say, fetch the book on my bed. This provides an extra movement opportunity for Zigzaggy, but it doesn't indicate that he has failed to finish the goal, which was to finish a given portion of food before leaving the table. So you can and really and truly every child is different and every child reacts different and of course every parent is different as well and your situation at home is not the same as any other person's situation. So you have to experiment a little bit with this but something like that usually works quite well. Then the next calming strategy is um, slow rhythmical linear movement. So um, and one that we love in therapy and that most kids really like is to roll over a ball like this top picture here. Um, and once again when you get the movement seeker in the room for the first time they will, would love to jump over the room, over the ball and they would um, just hang on. I think there is a problem with the um, speakers with a sound. Um, okay, is it correct now? Can everybody hear me? I hope that if you can't, please, just please send a message to um, um, info at coordikids.com and we will have a look at that. Um, okay, so let's get back to this. What do you say? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We have we're still having a problem with the sound. I'm going to change my um, um, microphone, and I hope that will work.
Okay, can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay, it seems to me that the problem is solved. Now, we have skipped one of the slides, so I'll just... I'll just continue. There, no, you saw the picture of the slow rhythmical movements over the ball. This is forward and backwards movements. And what I said is when kids come in for um, therapy and they are movement seekers, they often run to a ball and they will like to jump over it and go as fast as possible. It's very important to slow them down and to also help them to take some weight on their hands so that they can push up because that gives you the deep pressure and the proprioception and then the slow movement and that really calms him down. After about 10 or 15 rolls over the ball, they are usually much calmer. Then um, zigzaggy um, wants to jump but it's important to use control jumping that is on a slow beat or slow big jumps from for example from one tile to the other is also calming. If you just ask him to jump on the spot, they usually do it as fast as possible and it might actually increase the activity level and the need to move. And then in therapy sessions, we often make use of suspended equipment such as a hammock. And of course, the movements have to be controlled and the child should be involved in that activity and should have a goal to ensure that the movement is functional. Okay, I hope you all can hear me now. Um, let's see, other calming strategies can be the use of the mouth and the jaw. So the muscles of the mouth and jaw are strong self-regulating muscles. We all know that a baby can be settled by using the sucking muscles. Often many of us use these muscles when we want to calm in nervous situations. Some might grind the teeth, some eat, some suck mints, some drink water, make throat or mouth sounds, or bite on the lip. There are numerous opportunities to use with children, depending on the environment and the situation. Deep breathing, using the abdominal muscles and not only the chest is self-regulating and calming. Some children enjoy the yoga positions and feel calm and settled after maintaining some of these positions for a period of time. And then we get to the environmental modifications that we can do to help zigzaggy. The first one is changes in position, different seating options, movement breaks, as we have discussed before, and there can be programs that you can use, corner in the class, um, implement routines and a sensory diet, and then position the child in the class. I'm just going to quickly do this one because the others I will discuss again. So the position in the class, limit distractions, make sure that he has a clear vision of the teacher, of the board, and that he's within hearing distance without too many other distractions. So let's look at the changes in position. Um, allow the child to stand, to work at the table, to sit on the floor, to lie on the floor. Um, with their older kids, stack books or crayons under the chair so they have to reach down and you get some head movement to reach down under the chair. Allow them to walk or to pace while you are lecturing so that they have something to do while you're lecturing or at least give them something like um, Play-Doh or putty to play with um, while they're listening or allow them to do doodling. That is also um, great. Um, it helps a lot to concentrate on a, another person's voice. Okay, um, another um, environmental modification is seating options and we have these beautiful examples nowadays. Usually we use this little um, disc to sit on which is inflated and it gives the child the opportunity to move a little bit. Um, remember the TheraBand around the um, chair is quite good around the legs of the chair. But I love this, the way that they can cycle, they can stand or sit, um, stand at a table in a little group, sit on um, exercise balls, this is great and if you are attending a meeting or a lecture or whatever or at this time is quite tired, use an exercise ball, it keeps you awake. And then 
there are different options in this classroom for the kids to choose where they can sit because their bodies, their bodies often tell them what they have to do. Then the regular movement breaks, as we have discussed, a program such as Kauri class. You can use whole class activities, all the kids will enjoy, all of them will benefit from that. And then send the child on errands. And if you can put a backpack on or a fairly heavy thing that they can carry, then you get the um, proprioception as well. And just the walking, getting out of the classroom and getting back is usually very helpful um, for them. Then the movement corner in the class, these are examples, and I've just Googled them. You can just Google images and you get the most lovely examples. Um, this one is quite nice. There are different uh, movements that they can do when they go to the corner. This one is to do the wall push-ups, which is great, and there's another example. So um, depends on you and what your likes and dislikes are, and of course it's not only for the classroom, it's very helpful to use in your house as well. Um, then routines is quite imp um, routines are quite important because um, because these kids are so busy they often lose track of where they are in their day so it helps them a lot to have a visual routine so that they can know what to do when they get into the classroom over here what is happening in the classroom what they have to do um, and they can have, even take it off or turn this one around when they finish or like over here to do and then to put it on that side and say it's done. And it's very helpful to have it in your house as well for um, grooming routines in the morning, to get ready for school, um, bedtime routines. Um, it's really helpful. It, it, it takes parents sometimes a long time to do it. You don't have to do it as pretty as this. You can just draw little pictures. It really helps the kids and the older kids can do it themselves and can work out their own routine. Then a sensory diet is essential because that will include movement breaks and it will include all the other sensory needs that this child might have. I'm talking about zigzagging now with movement seeker. The chances are limited that he doesn't have a problem with the processing of another sense as well. So he might be a chewer as well. He might be... Um, very sensitive to noise, so we need to work out the sensory diet and I'll do a whole webinar on that because it takes a long time and it's necessary to do it individually for each child. Okay, so um, just quickly what a sensory diet is, it's a carefully designed personalized activity plan and the same way that you provide food for your child before they are starving from hunger, you need to provide a sensory input before they are craving it. So a sensory a movement seeker will crave that movement and he will have to move so many times during the day and so much more than the next child. Okay, so interventions will be the sensory integration occupational therapy, we'll do an assessment and individual therapy using the vestibular proprioceptive activities, that will be the best thing to do for um, zigzaggy. Then there are self-regulation groups like the ALERT program, how does my engine run, yoga, yoga and mindfulness for kids. I haven't investigated yoga and mindfulness for kids. I know it helps. I have no experience of that. These two groups we run um, where I work and they work quite well. Then extra things that you can do. Gymnastics are great. Martial arts are great. Swimming, running, walking. All good activities. Um, okay, so that's the end of that one. I just want to tell you about the future free web clinics that we're going to run. Um, the next one will be on the t um, processing of touch. And then we'll help Dozy, the movement avoider. And then we'll look at chewers and picky eaters, such as chomp and champ. And we'll also do the listening, hearing and auditory defensiveness and then design a sensory diet and then specific sleeping and toileting issues. Okay, so I just want to quickly, time is really flying, I just quickly want to answer um, questions that people has 
have asked before the webinar. The one was from Lorna. She's a mother and she just said that her child doesn't sit still at dinner table and it's very difficult for them to get him to finish his dinner. Lorna, I hope I answered your question um, during this webinar. If you couldn't hear it properly, um, I hope I will listen to the recording before we send it and if necessary, I'll, I'll redo the recording and I'll send that to you then. Um, and then also Tracy is a teacher and she said it's very tricky for her to address the issue of one child when the rest of the class needs her attention as well. So with the movement seekers, if you can have that little corner in the class and teach the seeker to go there at regular times, provide movement opportun opportunities at regular times, put in as many of these strategies as we have mentioned, then you will not have to spend so much time with zigzaggy. He will be able to self-regulate in a much better way. It will not disappear. With intensive therapy, it might be reduced a lot. The Coordi Kids program might help a lot as well because there's a lot of movement in and it is exercises that they do every day, so um, or at least five days a week. So there's a, a consistency, the vestibular system um, is addressed um, so their balance will improve, their core muscles will improve, it will be easier for them to sit for longer periods of time. Okay, and then Samantha, um, she's also a mother and she said, my little boy is behaving well in school but once at home he is frustrated, has meltdown and is overly active. So this I hear very, very often. Um, what happens is that at school, as most children, and really and truly just about all the children that I see, want to be well behaved, they want to please adults. So what happens with your little boy, Samantha, is that he goes to school and he puts his best foot forward, he tries his best to, to um, please the teacher, to do all his work correctly. He manages to do it but it takes a lot of effort and the moment he arrives home, he's in a safe environment, he's with mum, he knows you will love him forever and ever, no matter what he does and this is the safe place where he just falls apart and he has his meltdown and then he's overly active because he had to keep himself in at school for the whole day. So once again, if that happens, your child is not disruptive so the teacher might never um, have any comments or complaints about your child, but please ask the teacher to do some movement breaks and if you listen to the rest of these um, web clinics, you might get some more um, ideas of how to help your child. I hope that helped. Okay, so you can contact us at info, you can contact me personally at Margaret at Kaori Kids, um, you can um, book a session at Kaori Consult and, and then have a look at the Kaori Class program so that you can um, see if you or your child's teacher might need that in the classroom. Okay, so there are a few more questions. So Carol, do you feel that the support in the class will support Zigzaggy if he can't do therapy and his home environment is challenging? Oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. Um, definitely, if you, you will provide some movement opportunities for him and he will, you know, especially if you do the movements that I recommended, um, you will address the vestibular system and at least you will he will know that somebody understands him and he won't feel like the naughty kid in the class. Eventually he will learn, if I feel like this, I can do that to feel better. So um, if he can't attend therapy, just check if there isn't a therapist in your area that can do groups at school. That will be really good. Um, but if you implement these strategies, it will definitely help him. Um, as I said, even if he's just not labelled as the most difficult and most naughty child in the classroom. 
Okay. Dini, who is the best professional to assess if a child is a movement or a sensory seeker? I, I really do think um, it's an occupational therapist with a good background in sensory integration and sensory processing. Um, if you don't understand that, it's very easy to say that this child just needs to learn to sit still. And as we see, it's impossible. And some of the parents that I see have tried to do that since the child was born and it never worked. So um, I think a, um, an occupational therapist is the best person, definitely a therapist with a background in sensory processing. And also a physiotherapist might help, but if they don't have the understanding of sensory integration interventions, they might not be able to solve the problem completely. Okay, do you think, Carol, again, do you think astronaut training for vestibular support is helpful? Yes, I have um, used the astronaut program for children who cannot come into therapy regularly. It was people um, that lived about one and a half hours away, and I didn't think it will be therapeutic for that child to travel one and a half hours to attend a one-hour therapy session and travel one and a half hours back again. So I recommended this program. Mum, specifically the one child that really um, had very, very good reactions to that and the problems were solved completely. She's, it was about three years ago. She's without any issues at the moment. Um, and, um, but mum was a physiotherapist and she was dedicated. She did it exactly to the, to the book, everything, and it really worked well. I know of other cases which really didn't work so well and I think sometimes it's just that perhaps it wasn't the correct program for the child or the people implementing the program didn't do it as accurately as they should have. Okay, and then there's a car that says excellent, thank you, thank you very much and a Dimi that says thank you, cheers, thank you and can a child, oh, okay, that's it. All right, that was lovely to talk to you. Have a good night. Have a good day. All the best. Bye.